Okay, so we're ready to look at some of the properties of logarithms. Now I'm going to focus on the natural logarithm here, um, rather than general base A logarithm, because once you understand the natural log, it turns out you understand every, every log. Every other log is, is going to be basically the same as the natural log. We'll, we'll go into details on that, explain why that's true um, towards the end of the video. Okay, so basics. The natural log is defined as the inverse of the natural exponential, okay? And so we can think a little bit about, well, what do we know about the natural exponential? We know that the domain is all real numbers. It's true for every exponential function. We, uh, we saw from the graph that the range is from zero to infinity, right? Um, as x gets negative, the graph approaches the x-axis, but it never actually reaches it. Um, so the range is from zero to infinity, domain is r. Uh, when you take the inverse, domain and range, they switch roles. So that means that over here, the, the domain is going to be from zero to infinity. So in particular, that means that the natural log is not defined for zero. It's not defined for negative numbers. It's only defined for positive numbers, right? And the range, well, the range is all real numbers. The range is from minus infinity to infinity, right? Um, if you remember what the graph looks like, this makes sense, right? Let's just throw that in here, okay? So the graph for your natural log looks something like this, right? We have this intercept at one zero. So all the, all the negative values in the range are attained for x values between zero and one. And the positive values are attained for x values bigger than one. Uh, one, uh, one thing to point in, out is that uh, this is a very slow growing function, right? It's the inverse of the exponential. We said the exponential is very fast growing. The logarithm is, is, is one of the slowest growing functions, right? I mean, not, not as slow as, let's say, a, a constant function or, or something like a sine function, which is periodic and never gets bigger than one. But <coughs> it, you know, as x gets big, the, the natural log will, will eventually get big. It will eventually go to infinity, but it gets there very slowly, okay? Um, and that's one of the reasons why people like using logarithms. Logarithms are useful when you're working with very large numbers. They sort of tame those numbers down. They give you smaller numbers that are easier to work with. Right? Um, another reason that people like logarithms is they tend to take complicated arithmetic operations and turn them into simpler ones. Right? So one of the properties that we have for the natural log is that the natural log of say a times b is equal to the natural log of a plus the natural log of b, right? So if you've got some collection of numbers that you're working with and you've taken the natural log of all those numbers, then multiplication becomes addition, right? Addition is simpler than multiplication. It's easier to work with, right? Um, why, is that, why is this rule true? Well, if we use this association here, right, so we can see why this is true. Okay. On, on the one hand, I know that the natural log of A times B would be the natural log of E to the X times e to the y, if I set a equal to e to the x and I set b equal to e to the y. But I have a property here for exponentials, right? We know that e to the x times e to the y is e to the x plus y. Okay, so I can write it like that. Ah, but I also know that if I take the log of the exponential of something, those, those cancel out, right? Because they're, they're inverses of each other, right? The fact that f and g are inverses, right? This means, remember the definition of the inverse tells you that, that f of g of x is equal to x, 
for any input x. So in particular for this input x plus y, we have that. Right? So this is just x plus y. All right? um, but what's x plus y? Well, x is the natural log of a, <coughs> y is the natural log of b. And that gives you the right hand side. Okay? So similarly, you could do this with division. Okay? So the natural log of, of A over B is the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. And why is that? Well, let's see. The natural log of A over B would be the natural log of e to the x over e to the y, which is, well, we know that e to the x divide by e to the y, right? Another property of exponents says that's e to the x minus y. <coughs> so that's e to the x minus y. And again, the log and the exponential cancel each other out because they're inverses. I get x minus y. So I get log of a minus log of b. Right? Um, the last property, which, is, which can be quite useful, is that the natural log of a raised to a power, let's say k, is the same thing as k times the natural log of a. Okay. So this can be quite useful, right? This tells you that that again, right? Logarithms are simplifying your arithmetic. It's taking a power, right? Exponents is, is a fairly complicated arithmetic operation, and it's just turning it into multiplication. So things are simpler, right? And the reason why on this one. Well, if I do the natural log of a to the k, where a is e to the x, again, I have a property of exponents that says if I do e to the x and I raise it to some power, that's the same thing as e to the k times x. So this is the natural log of e to the k times x. And once again, I use the cancellation property of inverses to get k times x. And x is the natural log of a. Right? So I get that property. OK. Um, so those, those are the three main algebraic properties of logarithms. right? Together with domain range, this picture of the graph. Uh, the other thing that's probably useful to remember is this intercept, log of 1 equals 0. This is actually true for any log, right? For any log, if you plug in 1, you get 0, right? Any base, that's the result. Okay. Um, now, I mentioned that this is really all you need to know um, is, is these properties, and you need to know them for the natural log. Uh, the reason that's all you need to know is there's a formula that lets you work with logs in other bases. There's this so-called change of base formula. Um, I think we'll look at that in the next video.